Rod TV 65 documentary presents the James Cheney story, a life that ignited a movement. James Earl Cheney was born on May 30th, 1943 in Meridian, Mississippi. Let's look at a quick background of Meridian, Mississippi, of where it started to where it is today. Meridian is the sixth largest city in the state of Mississippi. It is the county seat of Lauderdale County and the principal city of the Meridian, Mississippi Metropolitan Statistical Area. Along major highways, the city is 93 miles east of Jackson, Mississippi, 154 miles southwest of Birmingham, Alabama, 202 miles northeast of New Orleans, Louisiana, and 231 miles southeast of Memphis, Tennessee. Established in 1860 at the junction of the Mobile and Ohio Railroad and Southwest Railroads of Mississippi, Meridian built an economy based on the railways and goods transported on them, and it became a strategic trading center. During the American Civil War, General William Sherman burned much of the city to the ground in the Battle of Meridian in February of 1864. Rebuilt after the war, the city entered the Golden Age. It became the largest city in Mississippi between 1890 and 1930 and a leading center for manufacturing in the South with 44 trains arriving and departing daily. Union Station, built in 1906, is now a multimodal center with access to Amtrak and Greyhound buses. Although the economy slowed with the decline of the railroad industry, the city has diversified with healthcare, military, and manufacturing. The population within the city limits is 40,000 and it is the sixth largest city in Mississippi. The area is served by two military facilities, Naval Air Station Meridian and Key Field, which employs over 4,000 people. NAS Meridian is home to the Regional Counter Drug Training Academy and the first local Department of Homeland Security in the state. Keyfield is named after the brothers Fred and Al, who set world endurance flight records in 1935. The field is now home to the 186th Air Refueling Wing of the Air National Guard and support a facility for the 185th Aviation Brigade of the Army National Guard. Downtown Meridian gives one that old hometown feeling of the South with great hospitality. Historical Meridian in 2009 elected its first female mayor, Sherry Berry, and later in 2013, the city elected its first African American mayor, Percy Bland and who was also re-elected in 2017. The city is well known for its entertainment and eating establishments. People from all over the United States come to visit Meridian, Mississippi. The social and political movement in the United States between 1954 and 1968 is considered the Civil Rights Movement. The movement wanted to put an end to things such as racism and inequality, especially in the southern states. The movement ushered in some key federal judiciary rulings. Separate but equal doctrine was overturned by Brown v. Board of Education in 1954. Bus segregation was ruled unconstitutional by Browder v. Gale in 1956. Interracial marriages were legalized by Loving v. Virginia in 1967. Passage of the Civil Rights Act of 1957 the Civil Rights Act of 1960 was passed. The Civil Rights Act of 1964 was passed. 
The Voting Rights Act of 1965 was passed. The Civil Rights Act of 1968, which included Fair Housing Act, were all ushered in during this movement. Other key things that happened. The 24th Amendment came into play in 1964. The formation of federal agencies, such as the Civil Rights Division within the U.S. Department of Justice in 1957, the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights in 1957, the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission in 1965, the Office of Fair Housing and Equal Opportunity within the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development in 1968. Between 1955 and 1968, acts of nonviolent protest and civil disobedience produced crisis situations and productive dialogue between activists and government authorities. Federal, state, and local governments, businesses, and communities often had to respond immediately to these situations, which highlighted the inequities faced by African Americans across the country. The lynching of Chicago teenager Emmett Till in Mississippi and the outrage generated by seeing how he had been abused when his mother decided to have an open casket funeral mobilized the African American community nationwide. Forms of protest and or civil disobedience included boycotts such as the successful Montgomery bus boycott in Alabama, sit-ins such as the Greensboro sit-in in North Carolina, and successful Nashville sit-ins in Tennessee, marches such as the 1963 Birmingham Children's Crusade and the 1965 Selma to Montgomery marches in Alabama, and a wide range of other nonviolent activities. The city of Meridian, Mississippi was not immune from these activities that were going on across the country. Students and activists in the city were getting others registered to vote, meeting in churches, talking about various strategies and how they can improve the racial harmony within the country, as well as the injustice that were happening throughout. James Earl Cheney was born on May 30th, 1943 in Meridian, Mississippi. James was born the eldest son of Fannie Lee and Ben Cheney Sr. His brother Ben was nine years younger and born in 1952. He also had three sisters, Barbara, Janice, and Julia. His parents separated for a time when James was young. His mother, a domestic servant, was protective. His father, a plasterer, left his mother when James was in his mid-teens. He was slightly built, but athletic. He was described as shy and public, but a cut-up in his home. James attended a Catholic school for the first nine grades. At the age of 15, as a high school student, he had some of his classmates begin wearing paper badges reading NAACP to mark their support for the National Civil Rights Organization, which is the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, founded in 1910. They were suspended for a week from the segregated high school because the principal feared the reaction of the all-white school board. After high school, Cheney started as an apprentice in a trade union with his father. In 1962, Cheney participated in a freedom ride from Tennessee to Greenville, Mississippi, and in another from Greenville to Meridian. He and his younger brother participated in other nonviolent demonstrations as well. James Cheney started volunteering in late 1963 and joined the Congress of Racial Equality, or CORE in Meridian. He organized voter education classes, introduced core workers to local church leaders, and helped co-workers get around the counties. One year later, he joined his home state branch of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee and the NAACP to form the Council of Federated Organizations to launch a massive voter registration and desegregation campaign in Mississippi. In 1964, he met with leaders of the Mount Nebo Baptist Church to gain their support for letting Michael Schwerner, CORE's local leader, come to address the church members to encourage them to use the church for voter education and registration. 
Cheney also acted as a liaison with other Corps members. In the early 1960s, Schwerner became an activist in working for the Civil Rights for African Americans. He led a local Congress of Racial Equality Group on the Lower East Side of Manhattan called Downtown Corps. He participated in a 1963 effort to desegregate Gwen Oaks Amusement Park in Maryland. As activism increased in the South, Schwerner and his wife Rita Schwerner, Brenda, volunteered to work for National Corps in Mississippi under the tutelage of Dave Dennis, the Corps State Director. Bob Moses assigned Schwerner to organize the community center and activities in Meridian. James Cheney was a local youth who started working with them. The Schwerners were the first whites to be assigned by Corps permanently outside the state capital of Jackson. When the Schwerners arrived in January to assume direction of the Meridian office, they found Cheney to be their most willing volunteer. In April, the Schwerners wrote a letter to the National Corps asking that Cheney become a paid staff member. We must consider him to be part of the Meridian staff. James has never asked us to buy him a cup of coffee, though he has no means to support. In the summer of 1964, Corps intended to hold classes and drives to register African Americans to vote in the state, what they call Freedom Summer. Many volunteers, many, mostly college students and young adults, have been recruited from local communities and northern western states to work on this project. Andrew Goodman was born and raised in the Upper West Side of New York City at 161 86th Street. He was the second of three boys born of Robert and Carolyn Goodman, and he and his family was Jewish. His family and community were steeped in intellectual and socially progressive activism and were devoted to social justice. An activist at an early age, Goodman graduated from the Progressive Walden School, which was said to have had a strongly informative influence on his outlook. He attended the honors program at the University of Wisconsin-Madison for a semester, but withdrew after falling ill with pneumonia. Goodman then enrolled at Queens College in New York City, where he was a friend and classmate of Paul Simon. With Goodman's brief experience as an off-Broadway actor, he originally planned to study drama, but switched to anthropology. Goodman's growing interest in anthropology seemed to parallel this increasing political seriousness. In 1964, Goodman volunteered along with fellow activists Michael Schwerner, his wife Rita Schwerner Bender, and James Cheney to work on the Freedom Summer Project of the Congress of Racial Equality to register black people to vote in Mississippi. Having protested U.S. President Lyndon Johnson's presence at the opening of that year's World's Fair, Goodman left New York to train and develop civil rights strategies at Western College for Women in Oxford, Ohio. In mid-June, Goodman joined Schwerner in Meridian, Mississippi, where they later was designated to head of the field office. They worked in rural areas on registering blacks to vote. Civil rights activists were resented and held under suspicion in Mississippi. Spies paid by the Mississippi State Sovereignty Commission, a taxpayer-funded agency, kept track of all northerners suspected of activists. The commission conducted economic boycotts and intimidation against activists. In 1998, its records were opened by the court order, revealing that the state's deep complicity in the 1964 murders of the three civil rights workers because its investigators, A.R. Hopkins, passed on information about the workers, including their car license number, to the commission. Records showed that the commission passed this information on to the sheriff of Neshoba County, who was implicated in the murders. Cheney and fellow civil rights workers Schwerner and Goodman were investigating the burning of Mount Zion Methodist Church, which had been a site for a core freedom school. In the wake of Schwerner and Cheney's voters registration rallies, parishioners had been beaten by whites. They accused the sheriff's deputy, Cecil Price, of stopping their caravan and forcing the deacons to kneel in the headlights of their own cars while white men beat them with rifle butts. The same whites who beat them were also identified as having burned the church.
Price arrested Cheney, Goodman, and Schwerner for an alleged traffic violation and took them to the Neshoba County Jail. They were released that evening without being allowed to telephone anyone. On their return to Meridian, the three men were stopped and arrested by Deputy Sheriff Cecil Price, a Klan's member, who were allegedly driving 35 miles over the 30 mile power speed limit. The trio were taken into jail in Neshoba County, where Cheney was booked for speeding while Schwerner and Goodman were booked for investigation. After Cheney was fined $20, the three men were released and told to leave the county. Price followed them in his patrol car. At 10.25, Price sped to catch up with the station wagon before it crossed the border into the relative safety of Lauderdale County. Price ordered the three out of their car and into his. He then drove them to a deserted area on Rock Cut Road while being followed by two cars filled with other Klansmen. He then turned them over to the Klansmen, who beat Cheney, chain whipping and castrating him, and then shooting him three times, after they had killed Schwerner, then Goodman, both with one shot in the heart. They buried the young men in an earthen dam nearby. The three civil rights activists' whereabouts remained unknown for a period of time. Prominent civil rights leaders throughout the country, such as Martin Luther King Jr., demanded that the federal government get involved to find out what had happened to the trio. The men's bodies remained undiscovered for 44 days. The FBI was brought into the case by John Doerr, the Department of Justice representative in Mississippi monitoring the situation during Freedom Summer. The missing civil rights workers became a major national story, especially coming on top of the other events as civil rights workers were active across Mississippi in a voters registration drive. And then a tip led to this. In 1967, the U.S. government went to trial, charging 10 men with the conspiracy to deprive the three murdered men of their civil rights under the Enforcement Act of 1870, the only federal law then applying to the case. The jury convicted seven men, including Deputy Sheriff Price, and three were acquitted, including Edgar Ray Allen, the former Ku Klux Klan organizer who had planned and directed the murders. Over the years, activists had called for the state to prosecute the murderers. The journalist Jerry Mitchell, an award-winning investigator, reporter for the Jackson Clarion Ledger, had discovered new evidence and written extensively about the case for six years. He developed new evidence about the civil rights murderers, found new witnesses, and pressured the state to prosecute. It began an investigation in the early years of the 2000s. In 2004, Barry Bradford, an Illinois high school teacher, and his three students, Allison Nichols, Sarah Siegel, and Brittany Saltillo, joined Mitchell's effort to a, in a special project. They conducted additional research and created a documentary about their work. Their documentary, produced for the National History Day contest, presented important new evidence and compelling reasons for reopening the case. 
They obtained a taped interview with Edward Ray Allen Killing, who had been acquitted in the first trial. He had been an outspoken white supremacist nicknamed the Preacher. The interview helped convince the state to reopen the investigation into the murder. On January 7, 2005, Edgar Ray Allen Killings was arrested. He was found guilty of three counts of manslaughter, not murder. On June 21, 2005, exactly 41 years to the day after the murders, he was sentenced to 60 years in prison, 20 years for each count to be served consecutively. The Presidential Medal of Freedom is the nation's highest civilian honor, presented to individuals who have made especially meritorious contributions to the security or national interest of the United States, to world peace, or to culture or other significant public or private endeavors. In November of 2014, this award was presented to the relatives of the three civil rights leaders, James Cheney, Andrew Goodman, and Michael Sperner were civil rights activists and participants in Freedom Summer, and historic voter registration drive in 1964. As African Americans were systematically being blocked from voter rolls, Mr. Cheney, Mr. Goodman, Mr. Schwerner joined hundreds of others working to register black voters in Mississippi. They were murdered at the outset of Freedom Summer. Their deaths shocked the nation and their efforts helped to inspire many of the landmark civil rights advancements that follow. James Earl Cheney, A Life of Promise, Seen the good in people, did not see color, believed in what was right, sought equal justice for all, wanted equal opportunities for all, a living legacy cut short. We may never know what God has in store for us, but the times that we do have we are to use it wisely and for the betterment of others. James Earl Cheney lived that out.